You know, most of us are not only stackers, but collectors as well. We collect old coins and vintage stuff because we love the history and the stories they tell. In today's episode, I deviate from discussing silver and gold and talk about paper currency. Hello Silver fans, this is T and you're in the place to be for Silver Education, Acquisition, and Entertainment. And hey, today before we get started on this paper currency that I'm very anxious to show you and uh, get your opinions on, it is now time for my customary request for a like and a sub. If you enjoy my video today, please be sure to hit that little thumbs up button and subscribe. I try to make videos that are a little bit out of the ordinary. And I also encourage comments. Please tell me a little bit more about this stuff that I'm about to show you because quite frankly, I don't know a whole lot about it. So I'm gonna talk and share and uh, ask you to participate by commenting. So uh, let's start off with a definition from Webster's Dictionary, fiat. What is fiat? Uh, fiat is defined by uh, Mr. Webster as money, such as paper currency, not convertible into coin or specie of equivalent value. Uh, what that means, I believe, is it is paper that is not backed by gold or silver, simply a promise from the issuing government. So uh, you've heard that term over and over on other channels and mine included fiat, 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 and people talk about it with disdain. Uh, uh, but fiat currency, of course, does have its upside. It's easier to carry this stuff around than it is to carry around uh, gold and silver in your pocket everywhere. The big problem about it that everybody's talking about lately is that there's no limit to the amount that banks can print. And the central bank and the Fed has been printing lots and lots of it lately. And that's been a topic of conversation and uh, perhaps a uh, contributor to inflation and hopefully not hyperinflation. Okay, let's start with a little show and tell. Uh, this is 10,000 pesos, 10,000 pesos from Mexico. And uh, I used to be in a habit of going to Mexico every other year. And so uh, one of the early times I went in the uh, early 90s, uh, you know, I cashed in my uh, dollars and uh, transferred them over to pesos. And of course you lose a little in that transaction. But I was wowed. I'm like I was handed bills like this, ten thousand pesos. Oh my gosh, I could buy a lot with that. And <laughs> in Mexico, your dollar does stretch farther. But this would buy maybe a Mexican blanket, or a couple of T-shirts at the mercado, or uh, uh, maybe lunch for a couple of people. The curious thing was uh, the next time I went uh, a couple of years later, I want to say maybe '94 or something like that. Instead of 10,000 pesos, this bill turned into 10 pesos, 10 pesos. So it went from 10,000 to 10 in a matter of a couple of years. Same bill, same uh, style of currency, same back, same everything. The government just chopped off three zeros. Can you believe that? And this became 10 pesos, uh, which was 10 pesos. Nuevos pesos. You see it says nuevos there. So the quote unquote uh, new pesos uh, were simply um, chopping off the three zeros from the original pesos when things kind of got out of hand uh, because of inflation and monetary policies. Um, things got out of hand to the point where they said, you know what, let's just chop three zeros off and make a new peso in the mid 90s. So uh, interesting story. Uh, and speaking of Mexico, I do have, I'm half Mexican myself. I have uh, plenty of Mexican currency uh, to show you. Some of it is uh, very beautiful. And uh, this is Guanajuato, a place that I've been in my travels. And uh, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to on earth. Uh, wonderful people, an art community. And uh, actually, 
a uh, community very uh, steeped in a history of uh, precious metals. Uh, so um, the art community was very lively in Guanajuato. And uh, right now, I think uh, the cartels are very lively in Guanajuato, from what I've been told. And uh, there's another Diaz Pesos. Uh, this is an old Diaz, Diaz Pesos. What's this from? Oh, 19... 1975. So, <laughs> uh, and here is a beautiful Bank No Banco de Mexico, 1969. And uh, how gorgeous is that? Uh, anybody uh, recognize the uh, wing victory there from the Libertad coins that so many of us love? Oh, here's another curious thing. Look what it says at the bottom. American Banknote Company. Ah, interesting. And switching gears here, uh, look at old Saddam. This one is uh, Bank of Iraq. I'm not sure where I picked this one up. Uh, five dinars. Quite a while ago, I, you know, of course, started out as a collector. And I would go to coin shops and buy coins, and then sometimes stuff like this on the counter would catch my eye, and I would pick something up. Another Banco de Mexico. Uh, and some of this stuff is stuff that I picked up while I was in Mexico, very careful not to get it all crinkled up and everything, and would bring it home. Uh, one of the things about paper currency is uh, the beauty uh, and the interesting subject matter you find on the notes and so as I'm going through here if you see anything that uh, you think might actually be of value uh, please let me know oh, and we were talking about inflation just a moment ago I almost forgot when I was talking about Mexico that uh, my next door neighbor and I were chatting over the fence and uh, he brought this out uh, many of you have seen this the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe 100 trillion dollars uh, he picked this up uh, just as a curiosity and uh, look at the, look at all those zeros goodness gracious you've got a beautiful waterfall and you've got a water buffalo and you've got basically a worthless piece of currency uh, because i doubt it if 100 trillion dollars amounts to very much at all uh, in zimbabwe these days who knows uh, here's one from kuwait Interesting subject matter. Kids playing marbles there. A half a dinar. And interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just a sucker for $2 bills. Whenever I get them, I hold on to them. I don't know if any of you are the same way. Uh, but this depiction on the back of the $2 bill, uh, to me, is really, uh, out of all of the United States currency, uh, the most impressive and the most beautiful to me. Maybe that's why I keep them. Uh, but I've got quite a few of them. And here we go. Another from the Middle East. What do we have here? Uh, Saudi Arabia with the palm trees there. And uh, I think I showed you this one the other day. I picked this, as a, this one up at the Gold Depot the other day. 1935 silver certificate. Uh, kind of representing when this could be cashed in for actual silver. Those days are long gone. Another uh, Banco de Mexico. Un mil pesos, a thousand pesos. This is a beauty. And I've been there too, Chichen Itza. Uh, those of you who go to Cancun, or Cancun, uh, it's worth your uh, trip from Cancun to Chichen Itza. And back in the day, when I was there, they would actually let you climb to the top and uh, I, I took some pictures from up there. I've been told that since then, uh, they don't allow people to climb to the top of the pyramid anywhere anymore, uh, but uh, I had that opportunity, so you know I seized it. Well, here's more African currency, and there you go, Gambia. Then we go around the world to the Bahamas with the middle-aged queen there and a band on the back. Uh, more Mexican currency. Uh, Mexican currency tells a lot of history. And there we go. Banco de Mexico. 
Uh, this one's from Brazil. Dapper looking gentleman there with the interesting facial hair. And uh, look at that beautiful artwork. Uh, it kind of makes me curious to learn more of the history. What battle was this? Or what event was this? And hey, look again. American Banknote Company. So we were making uh, Mexican and Brazilian, probably other countries' currency as well. Now, I mentioned that I'm half Mexican. I'm also half Polish. And uh, yes, I know what you're thinking. Uh, there couldn't be a better combination when it comes to food. And uh, yeah, our holidays in our house, um, we have tamales and we have pierogi. And um, here is some Polish currency. And what's this one? I don't know. It's beautiful, whatever it is. Oh, yen. A thousand yen. Very interesting there. And I have no idea. So maybe some of you who are watching this uh, might know what this is. I really don't know. Interesting little character there. And uh, back to the Cayman Islands with a younger looking queen. And some beautiful sea life on the back. Very cool. Uh, then we go to Jamaica. And more palm trees. And a beautiful building there. Uh, more African currency. A young man there and a beautiful bird. And uh, showing off their technology of the time, uh, which was a big old satellite dish. Now this, uh, this one uh, holds a special place in my heart. Oh, look at you have, looks to be a miner there. Uh, Banco de, Banco del Estado de Chihuahua, which is, uh, Chihuahua is the state where my grandfather is from. And there's the eagle with the snake on the back. And uh, more from Chihuahua. Mexican cowboy. There you go. And uh, there's more. And oh, here's Brazil. Uh, perhaps uh, their version of Albert Einstein or some scientist of some sort. I see a microscope. Maybe he uh, made an important discovery. And a beautiful building. Oh, there's more palm trees there. And this one. Wow, look at this old one. Gobierno Provisional del México. And I really don't know much about this. I, I remember being impressed with this one at a coin shop way back in the day. I, um, I paid $7.95 for it. And um, I don't know when this is from. I need to, I guess I need to take a magnifying glass and uh, really search it pretty carefully. If any of you have any information, uh, it says 1914 there, and it says 1914 there. I don't know if that was just a historic date or that's when this was actually printed, uh, but it is beautiful. And obviously it tells the story of the origin of uh, Mexico, the two volcanoes in the back, the eagle on a cactus eating a snake, which was a signal to the people at the time that this is where they needed to make their home. And uh, the Mexican people, what later became the Mexican people, uh, were wandering and wandering and wandering. And uh, finally, uh, that signal, that sign, uh, was the sign that this is a place they need to put down roots. And that wandering band of Native Americans that were wandering the land of what would be later become Mexico, that's where they put down their roots and they became the mighty Aztec Empire. So, and I guess this must have been way back in the day when one peso <laughs> what really was worth something. Um, I've got some other from my neighbor. Uh, I've got some uh, Indian money with Mahatma Gandhi, and we we're talking about the beauty of the currency. Uh, this one has a beautiful tiger and an Indian elephant on it. And uh, uh, my neighbor was telling me 
about uh, these coming from the government in Mexico. These were issued uh, so people could uh, buy food with them. And so you uh, get these, 20 pesos. Uh, oh, valid during 1997. And you go buy your tortillas or your other food at the store with this little tienda check. Here's another one from my neighbor. Uh, very uh, stylish hair style there on this uh, gentleman. Uh, again, not sure where this is from. If it, it looks like an artist. I see paintbrushes there and a palette. If any of you know, uh, please uh, be sure to let me and the other viewers know. And so I won't uh, go through all of these uh, with you. Uh, but, oh, here, I think these might be... Uh, reproduction uh, of uh, original states paper money in Georgia 1777 yeah I'm sure these these were purchased at a gift shop uh, in Mount Vernon for two dollars so obviously these aren't actual uh, you know is an actual paper currency but as you could see this is what our currency used to look like way back in the day oh look one dollar Continental currency, June 8th, 1777. So we've come a long way. And uh, so it does beg some questions though, as we talk about paper currency and we look at all this cool stuff, uh, I guess the question is, is this valuable or not? Is this stuff worth collecting, um, worth saving? Uh, I think so, but uh, you tell me, Is it or is it just gonna kinda be lost and forgotten and uh, not uh, worth anything as time goes by and uh, I guess the other question is will paper currency in general uh, will this stuff like this and like this and all of this stuff will all of this just go away uh, I was at Wrigley Field watching a baseball game and watching my cubbies beat the Reds last weekend and Wrigley Field is now 100% cashless. Even the beer vendors take cards. Imagine that. It's like the end of an era where you, you, know, you hand your beer vendor some cash and you get some change and you tell them to keep a couple bucks or what have you. Uh, those days are gone. I asked the guy, like, when did this start? And it started this season. And he goes, uh, brave new world, huh? And uh, just kind of lamenting the fact that, you know, Time marches on and uh, things change. So I guess the question is, uh, will we be using paper currency? Will we even be using coins uh, as the world marches on? Will we uh, convert to um, some sort of a Fed coin or some sort of cryptocurrency, uh, whether it's issued by the federal government or we all just switch over to Bitcoin or what have you? Will we all just be trading credits uh, from a card or, uh, you know, in some or other way, shape, or form. Uh, I don't know, but uh, this is a throwback to times of the past that uh, I think needs to be appreciated. I think I need to get a binder to put all this stuff in and make it look nice. Uh, but I hey, I appreciate you watching. Uh, please give me your opinions in the comment section below. And as always, I certainly appreciate you spending some time with me, T the Silver Stacker. T.